Uh, let's bring in Jeff Lyons, the film critic, former NBC and PBS film critic, the hosting the Lions Den Radio and host of the syndicated baseball trivia minute. The seventh book comes out in October. What a time it was. Leonard Lyons and the Golden Age of New York, not like nightclubs. And Jeff joins us here on the show. How are you, Jeff? How are you? I'm glad we're not going over the uh, career uh, on screen of Dan Patrick because we would have to talk about movies like I Now Pronounce You Chuck and Larry, uh, Grown Ups 2. Uh, you know, uh, he, he, I'm glad he's kept his day job. What was Dan Patrick's best performance in a movie? Hard to say. So much to choose from. So little time. Uh, maybe the house bunny. <laughs> he often plays cops, apparently. Uh, he was on that wonderful series, It's Like You Know, uh, Hercules and the Big Games. Uh, you know, he was the voice. Uh, he and I were on the same show, actually, Arliss. Uh, we both of us played ourselves in different episodes. Harless is one of my favorite all-time shows. You know, my dad was a famous Broadway columnist, and he played himself in a movie once with Joan Crawford and Henry Fonda, <clears throat> and the critics said he was unconvincing. It's very hard to play yourself. If Dan Patrick died tomorrow, would he get in the in memoriam, you know, montage at they the Oscars? They don't do that anymore on on this week and maybe They haven't done that for about three years. It was one of the best parts of the show. Absolutely. Oh, sure, he would, but I don't know, if, not for his acting, but uh, uh, of, yeah, he he would get it. Sure, he's he's certainly well known, but uh, not for his movie career. All right, tell me about LeBron's role in Trainwreck. I haven't seen the movie yet. Well, I but like Trainwreck. It's a little too long. I love Judd, Ap- Judd Apatow. By the way, go to YouTube, <clears throat> and you'll see uh, Judd Apatow uh, riffing, uh, talk, doing his stand-up, which he, which he hadn't done in years. And he wrote, he, he once, in it, when he was a teenager, he interviewed Steve Martin. And he also does a riff on Bill Cosby and does the perfect Bill Cosby. And by the way, there's a college athlete who became an actor. He was a high jumper at uh, Temple uh, a long time ago, not to dwell on Bill Cosby. Uh, so uh, LeBron James is in a uh, uh, train wreck. He's in it a little too long. I mean, it, it takes kind of takes you out of the movie. It's as if Judd, who directed uh, the movie uh, uh, and co-wrote it, I think, with, with Amy Schumer, uh, it's as if he's showing off, saying, look, look, I got LeBron James and Amari Stoudemire, too. And it also kind of dates the film because you see the old Knicks from two years ago, uh, not nearly as bad as this past year's Knicks. And you see, you know, uh, Mike Woodson coaching. So that kind of dates the film, too. But yeah, Le- LeBron is in it, and he's fine. But the, the, the novelty wears off quickly. So if you're going to give LeBron, say, out of five stars, what would you rate him? Uh, playing himself, uh, he's fine. You know, he's self-effacing. He's got a screen presence. You know, Michael Jordan would do things like that. But a lot of people, you know, um, uh, athletes in show business uh, are, are closely aligned. But one of my favorite stories is that when um, Damn Yankees opened on Broadway in 1950, Five or more or less, Yogi Berra was sitting next to the producer, George Abbott. And early on, the Yankees start singing in the shower, and Yogi tapped the producer, George Abbott, and he says, you got to cut that out. We never do that. Uh, nobody liked Yogi. He's Jeff Lyons, film critic, joining us here at Dan Patrick Show. Give, then, if, if LeBron was you know, okay, who's the best athlete turned actor in your mind? That's a good question. Uh, well, there have been a lot. It depends on the kind of a role. Johnny Weissmiller, who was an Olympic swimmer, Buster Crabb was an Olympic swimmer, both Tarzans. Johnny Weissmiller is the quintessential Tarzan. Johnny Mac Brown, uh, probably long before your time, certainly before my time, too, was an All-American uh, at, at Alabama, and he made a string of B-movie westerns back in the days of Republicans. Public pictures. Chuck Connors was the rifleman, as you know, was uh, a first baseman for the Brooklyn Dodgers and the Chicago Cubs. Jim Brown, of course, was Jim Brown, greatest football player of the modern era, I think, uh, made a string of movies. Uh, Fred the Hammer Williamson. Henry Louis Gehrig made a terrible movie uh, where he was a singing cowboy. Babe Ruth played himself, of course, in Pride of the Yankees and was in a Harold Lloyd movie. Uh, they're, they're, they're all pretty good. They are what they are. You know, Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris were, 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 were in that touch of mink with Doris Day. And there was another actress in the movie, I forget her name, and she sat next to them in the scene, and she turned to Mickey and said, and what do you do? Uh, Ralph Kiner was in the original version of uh, Angels in the Outfield, along with Ty Cobb. 
Uh, I like Ronda Rossi in, uh, in uh, uh, Entourage. Althea Gibson, you know, well, Althea Gibson was just played a slave in The Horse Soldiers, one of the best John Wayne movies about the Civil War. Uh, I don't think you're, you're going to go uh, too far astray if you offer an athlete a role playing themselves, because it's, while it's not easy, it they don't really have to show much range. The movie Southpaw is out today, and you've got that new Rocky uh, film coming out later this year with Creed and Apollo's yep. son. It seems like boxing movies are very easy to make, and you see a lot of them over the last 20, well, Jake, 30 years. Give Jake Gyllenhaal some credit. He got into incredible shape. He, he gets six-pack uh, you know, abs. And the problem with, with the movie is the fight. You know, If you're a sports fan like we are, the fight sequences are not realistic because he's playing a light heavyweight. And first of all, he's given six weeks to train for a title fight. You need a year to train for a title fight. Second of all, I don't see many boxing matches anymore. I did see Archie Moore fight when I was a kid and uh, Oscar Bonavina. But uh, uh, fighters, uh, particularly in the heavier weights, don't go in like flyweights and go boom, 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 boom. I know that plays well on screen. Uh, but if you want to see a great boxing movie, uh, you know, uh, Wright Cross is a good one. Uh, Kirk Douglas made a good one called Champion. Uh, more interesting for what it was out of the ring than in the ring uh, because he, he was a comic complex character. Somebody up there likes me, but you just have to be realistic. If you watch a fight on TV or if you go to one, you'll notice that they, they, there aren't that many punches thrown. You know, my, my son Ben went to watch the, the Merriweather fight, and he said there were two punches thrown, or so it seemed. In this movie, they're hitting each other, wailing away in every single round. I know that makes a better movie, but it the, the best boxing movie probably ever made, you know, is Robert De Niro's movie. So, uh, it's it's not easy to draw the line between what works well on screen and what looks real. Good to visit with you, Jeff. Appreciate the time. Thanks very much. If you talk to Dan, give him my best. I sure will. That's Jeff Lyons, film critic, joining us here. Dan Patrick Show.